Hello, and welcome to PC Jack. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to install the AMD Reef Stealth Cooler, and most importantly, I'm going to be showing you how to avoid doing this. Press F to pay respects. <laughs> Now, this may seem like an unnecessary video to make, but if you're like me and spend enough time on the internet, you've probably come across countless posts of people who have been uninstalling their Rafe Stealth coolers and have basically yanked their CPU out of the socket. Now, I just want to make my own contribution to stop this from happening, because every time I see it, a part of me dies inside and seeing another CPU that's fallen victim to some needless yanking out of a socket. So today, I'm going to show you how to install the Rafe Stealth Cooler and also I will explain exactly how you should uninstall this and avoid your CPU being taken out of the socket. If you enjoy it, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'll have some more tutorials on the way soon for some other air coolers that I'm actually going to be testing this week. So make sure you stay tuned for that video when it comes out. So for this tutorial, I'll be using my 2600X installed in the Gigabyte B450i Aorus uh, ITX board. Now the first step before we can actually install our Reef Stealth Cooler is we will need to uninstall these brackets be here, which are only necessary if you're using a Reef Prism Cooler. So let's just unscrew these four screws and uh, get these brackets off before we start. So we've got those two brackets off now. I would advise keeping those aside if you do decide to use a cooler in the future that does actually need those brackets. So uh, just keep them in a little uh, baggie in, uh, in a drawer just in case for the future. Now the one thing we do need to make sure of is that we let the back plate remain behind the motherboard and allow these uh, screw holes to uh, protrude through the motherboard. This is where our cooler is actually going to uh, screw into. Now we can take out our Rafe Stealth cooler and uh, as you can see underneath you will see there's thermal paste pre-applied so we won't actually have to apply any for now this should do the job just fine now all we need to do is we need to uh, line up the four screws with the cooler into the screws on the back plate just take your time and slowly uh, lower it down to make sure you've got it lined up correctly now I like to have the AMD logo on the left just to avoid any clearance issues with the RAM so uh, once that's down I like to start with one screw corner and just get that threaded. So you may start to notice that the other side will start to lift up. If I turn this around. As you can see, it is lifting a little bit. So all we would do is start in the opposing corner and get that one screwed in as well. Then once you can see that, that is screwed in along with the corner we started in. We know we've uh, threaded them in enough, so we've got contact the back plate can dip a little bit. So all we're going to do is carry on screwing in a uh, cross pattern to ensure there's even distribution over the IHS and then we will continue screwing until the screws bottom out. There we go, so we've uh, screwed all four screws down into the back plate and they've actually bottomed out so we can't actually turn them anymore so you don't need to over tighten them on there. So the next step, what you'll need to do is you need to locate your CPU fan header on the motherboard. It can vary in location on your motherboard so it's best to check in your motherboard manual. But once you find it, plug in the CPU fan header connector. So there we have it, we have our installed Brave Stealth cooler. Now, picture couple of months down the line you do decide to upgrade your cooling solution say to uh, a larger air cooler or potentially to an AIO you now need to get this uninstalled and now if it's been a few months the pre-applied thermal paste may have uh, like uh, coagulated together and form a, quite a strong bond with the CPU IHS so you've got to be pretty careful with the way you actually uh, remove this because there is a potential for ripping the CPU out of the socket which uh, obviously is not ideal as you could possibly uh, bend or even break the pins so the first thing you should do is to uh, make sure you've had your computer running for a certain amount of time 
and run something CPU intensive such as Prime95 or Cinebench for example. Just something to put a decent uh, thermal load on the system which should help to loosen the uh, thermal paste a little bit so it's not as uh, solidified. So once you've done that feel free to unplug your CPU from your fan header and now this, in the same way that you installed your cooler, just unscrew each four screws in a cross diagonal pattern just so there's even pressure when removing from the CPU. Now depending on whether you're uninstalling this outside of the case or in the case, you may notice that the back plate will uh, drop off. Obviously once all the four screws are out, there's nothing to hold it in place, so uh, if I was to lift this up, you should see, there we go, so the back plate is uh, stable there now. This is the part where you need to be careful and remove the cooler in the best way possible. You do not want to lift this directly up, as that force could actually pull out the CPU, which we do not want to do. So the best way to do this, once we put a decent load on the CPU to warm up that thermal paste, what we're going to do is to twist and slide the cooler and then after a couple of seconds of wiggling it'll actually pop off by itself with only a little bit of force upwards. So see that? That's formed quite a decent bond on there so all we want to do is just gently twist back and forth like that and there we go. As you can see that's popped straight off without pulling the CPU out of the socket. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I'm hoping that uh, what you uh, found in the video was useful and you've successfully removed your cooler without uh, taking the CPU out with it. But if you are stuck at all, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll respond and uh, give you a hand if you need. Please like and subscribe for some more content on the way soon and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.